Ambassador Zhang, Ambassador Li, Ambassador Sun, Chairs Nui, Tulin, and Hills, distinguished guests, Lao Pengyo, and friends. As many of you know, I'm quite fond of quoting Chairman Mao. That's what happens when you start studying Chinese in the 1960s. <laughs> Mao's little red book was omnipresent. But I still find his aphorisms give us a special way to understand China and the world around us. Tonight, let me quote Chairman Mao's reworking of a classical Chinese adage from Zhuangzi. In translation, we think too small, just like the frog at the bottom of the well. He thinks the sky is only as big as that patch of blue at the top of the well. If he surfaced, he would have an entirely different view. Our job at the National Committee for the last 46 years is really quite simple. Our mission is to get us to the top of the will, well so we can see the entire sky, so that people on both sides of the Pacific can realize the potential in the U.S.-China relationship. The most powerful tool that we have, education and educate we must. At our gala dinner one year ago, I stood on this very stage and read a headline from that morning's Wall Street Journal. It said, one loser in presidential polling, China. Twelve months later, as we prepare for the election next month, the story remains unchanged. This morning's headlines remind us of how much work must be done on both sides. Distrust, downturn, cheater, thief are the terms that have come to dominate our political discussion about China. These words and images have become the platform of those who mischaracterize the relationship, mischaracterize our shared interests, and suggest the United States and China are better off confronting one another rather than looking for areas to cooperate. I don't believe that characterization, and I know by showing your support for this organization and its mission, you don't either. Four weeks from tomorrow, Americans will elect the president who will preside over the bilateral relationship for the next four years. Just two days later, we will see the beginning of the transition in China's leadership when Vice President Xi Jinping, whom we hosted in February, will assume the presidency of China. This is the first time repeat the first time that these two events have coincided since the founding of the People's Republic of China 63 years ago. It presents the leaders of both countries with a unique opportunity to reset the U.S.-China relationship, to focus on solutions rather than legacies of 20th century conflicts. We must ask our leaders to abandon the campaign rhetoric and focus instead on a future of shared prosperity and cooperation. Resetting the relationship is a daunting task, but in 1972, so was the prospect of bringing a group of ping pong players from the People's Republic on a tour of the United States. At that time, China was called Red China and had been cut off from the United States for 23 years. We were American imperialists to the Chinese, but a visionary and passionate group of people, several of whom, including our intrepid Vice President Jan Barris, are with us tonight.
They didn't bow under the pressure. They didn't shrink under the weight of the task, but they committed themselves to opening a new chapter in U.S.-China relations. They committed themselves to educating Americans and creating the endless possibilities that education and understanding brings. Tonight, we celebrate 40 years since the day the National Committee helped push us all to the top of the well. We continue to expose the whole sky with our many programs aimed at promoting constructive engagements. Since our last gala, we have hosted 30 public programs. Three weeks from tonight, I will interview Ambassador Gary Locke via live webcast as part of our sixth annual China Town Hall, simultaneously held in a record 60 venues throughout the United States. We have hosted track two dialogues on security issues, economic relations, and rule of law. Two weeks from today, we will run an intensive seminar on China for senior officers from the U.S. Navy. We have taken three delegations of congressional and Senate staff to China. We kicked off the third round of our public intellectuals program, making it 60 next generation China hands who have been brought into this outstanding program that trains the most promising American academics to participate in public discourse about China. And that's only a small sampling of the work that our dedicated staff has produced since the last gala. This year also marks the 17th anniversary of the Teachers Exchange Program, the longest running exchange program for professional teachers between the United States and China, generally support, generously supported by the Freeman Foundation for 16 years. When that funding ended early this year, we planned to end the program. When in walked a visionary who shares our belief that through teaching Americans Chinese and Chinese English, we can build the foundation for a stronger relationship between the United States and China. She stepped forward and provided the full funding for that program. She has come from Beijing to be with us, us tonight, so it is my pleasure to introduce to all of you that, that visionary, Linda Wong, founder of EHI Properties. <laughs> Linda, please stand. John <laughs> Chila. I also want to recognize a very special guest who has traveled from Beijing to be with us tonight. In a few moments, our honorees will be presented with paintings created by a talented and decorated Chinese artist, Zhao Wei, who among other recognitions was named National Artist of the First Class by China's Ministry of Culture. You can see his artwork on the screens on both sides, and please join me in thanking Zhao Wei for generously donating these beautiful paintings and welcome him and his family. Zhao Wei, Qingyi Zhan Last, but certainly not least, I want to thank each and every person in this room tonight, without whom we would have no hope of moving to the top of the well. Because of your commitment to the National Committee and to U.S.-China relations, I am proud to announce that we have raised tonight in excess of $1.4 million, the second most in our history. Let me offer my special thanks to our most generous, generous sponsors tonight, to Hank Greenberg and the Star Foundation, without whom we could not do what we do so well. Thank you, Hank. <laughs> to Pfizer for growing our partnership 
and to our outstanding honorees, Indra Nui of PepsiCo and Inga Tulin of 3M for attracting new sponsors. I would also like to acknowledge our leading sponsor companies, Alcoa, BlackRock, Chartis, Chevron, Citi, GE, United Airlines, and West Legend. Finally, I want to give a shout out to Diana Ragaman. If you haven't heard from her, you probably haven't been around in this country for the last two months. She has done an outstanding job in raising these funds and directing this dinner. In closing, let me direct, directly address our Chinese partners, and if I may, and with your indulgence, let me do it in Chinese. Wa For those of you who didn't get that, I said at the beginning of my remarks, in translation, this is the first time a U.S. presidential election and a Chinese leadership transition are occurring at the same time since the founding of the People's Republic of China. I cannot thank you enough for what you have already done but I ask, I should say, I implore you to redouble your efforts so we are not that frog stuck in the bottom of the hill, well and we see the whole sky. Thank you. Will you please direct your attention to the stage as I welcome the chairman of the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations, Ambassador Carla Hills. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Good evening, Ambassador Zhang, Li, and Sun, distinguished honorees, and guests, and friends all. I hope you have enjoyed your dinner and enjoyed your dinner conversation. I know you enjoyed the extraordinary musical performance that preceded. So I'll take that as a thank you to Wycliffe Gordon, who for good reason is called the, um, the Music Ambassador for America. And I want to express special thanks to our two outstanding honorees, Indra Nui, Chair of PepsiCo, and Ng Tu Lin, the CEO and of, of uh, 3M and their friends and supporters who fill this room. Let me say we are so very, very grateful for all of our gala sponsors who are listed in our program and we have special gratitude to each and every one of you. You know, for four decades, the National Committee has dedicated itself to building stronger ties between the United States and China. And our efforts have never been more needed than they are today. Our vital interests are interlinked in so many critical issues, whether you're talking about the global economy or pandemics, piracy, nuclear non-proliferation, food safety, so much more. We need 
to work together. And experience shows that by broadening and deepening our relationship, both public and private, we are more likely to find solutions on an agreed basis to the tough issues that we face that will allow us to convert challenges into opportunities. And thanks to all of you, the National Committee has raised, as Steve Orleans mentioned, $1.4 million in unrestricted funds And that enables us to continue vitally needed programs that seek to bond our two countries. Programs like our Track 2 Dialogues, our Young Leaders Forum, the trips we arrange for our senators and our House members, and uh, the City Hall that uh, Steve mentioned that links 60 towns and cities across America all of these programs and more raise awareness of the value of our bilateral relationship. And finally, I want to publicly express my thanks to our outstanding President Steve Orleans and our tireless Vice President Jan Barris. to the wonderful staff at the National Committee, each of whom does the work of four. These talented people work day and night to make good on our mission, and year after year, this team imagines and implements new programs to expand and enrich the Sino-American relationship. This past Friday, I received a letter that I would like to share with you. It begins, I send greetings to all those attending the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations 2012 Gala Dinner. Since President Richard Nixon's historic visit to China in 1972, the relationship between our two nations has grown in ways leaders at the time could not have imagined. Our relations have broadened and deepened over the last 40 years, and the relationship between the United States and China still play an integral role in shaping the 21st century. We now have an extraordinary range of issues on which we work together through our regular consultations and our strategic and economic dialogue. President Hu and I understand that our countries face an overreaching challenge to defy the notion that a rising power and an established power are destined for conflict. Organizations like the National Committee are essential in helping us to meet this challenge by working to increase understanding between American and Chinese citizens at all levels of society. Your unique and innovative programs help foster mutual respect and enrich the shared values of our peoples. And I hope you take pride in your achievement as you gather on this occasion. I wish you all an enjoyable event. Signed, Barack Obama. Now let me invite to the podium Ambassador Zhang Yusui, China's very, very able ambassador to the United States and a great friend to the National Committee. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I have the great honor of reading the letter of congratulations from President Hu Jintao. Quote, Madam Carla Hills, Chair of the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations, Mr. Stephen Orleans, President of the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations. 
I wish to extend my warm congratulations on the 46th anniversary of the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations. I would also like to extend my sincere greetings and best wishes to all the American friends who have endeavored to promote China-U.S. relations. Over the years, the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations have worked tirelessly to deepen mutual understanding and friendship between our two peoples. The National Committee has also made great efforts to expand exchanges and cooperation between our two countries. I greatly appreciate your contribution to the development of China-U.S. relations. Currently, China and the United States are committed to working together to build a cooperative partnership based on mutual respect and mutual benefit, and to explore a new type of relationship between our two countries. China-U.S. relations is faced with important opportunities as well as challenges. I believe the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations will continue to keep pace with the times, build upon its success, and make new contributions to the enhancement of U.S.-China relations. I wish the National Committee's 2012 gala dinner a great success. Hu Jintao, President, the People's Republic of China, unquote. I thank you very much. As we move to the awards portion of our program, I uh, want to thank again the highly acclaimed artist, Zhang Wei. We're thrilled that our honorees will receive one of his magnificent paintings, and we thank you for your tremendous generosity. Now for the awards, we are very pleased to have Michelle Caruso Cabrera, the Chief International Correspondent for CNBC and the recipient of a long list of journalist awards to introduce our two distinguished honorees. Michelle. Thank you very much, Carla. Good evening. I'm honored to be here at this dinner honoring the work of this organization and also these companies because our most critical relationship internationally right now the United States is with China, and the quality of that relationship will determine our future. So the work that you do could not be more important. Excuse my glasses, ever since I turned 25 last year, I have to use them now. Um, <laughs> so it is my pleasure to introduce the leader of a company that has been improving lives through innovation since 1902, 3M. Inga Tulin and 3M are being recognized tonight for the work they have done to cultivate strong relationships between China and the U.S. over the past three decades. He was named President and Chief Executive Officer of 3M in February of this year. He was named Chairman of the Board of Directors in May. And although newly appointed to lead the $30 billion company, he's not new to 3M. He's a 32-year veteran, served as Executive Vice President, Chief Operating Officer of 3M since May of 2011 after having served as Vice President 3M Asia Pacific and also EVP of 3M International Operations since 2003. He joined 3M Sweden in 1979, working in sales and marketing, and then subsequently assuming levels of uh, greater responsibility. Lots of hands-on experience building businesses in both developed and developing economies. And he's got a really good grasp of societal trends, super important. For example, his business background, also his Nordic upbringing, helped shape his view that the global trend toward sustainability presents tremendous opportunity for 3M, both in terms of the environment, but also in terms of profitability for the company. He's known for emphasizing teamwork, something he learned as playing a hockey player in one of Sweden's top leagues. And when you see him, I think you'll still think he looks athletic. He's known for his quick wit and accessibility, focused clarity, also to effectively prioritize. He's a native of Malmo, Sweden. He's an outdoor enthusiast, a skier, a skater, also enjoys hiking. He and his wife, Helene, are citizens of the United States. They reside in the Twin Cities. 
So the award, the award I'm about to present to Inga in 3M, you've heard a lot about already. It's really beautiful. It's presented on the behalf of the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations. It's a scroll painting created by Beijing artist Zhao Wei, who you've been introduced to several times tonight. I think we're going to show it on the screen in a second. A replica of this custom-made work of art appears on the screens. It's called, this one in particular for 3M is called Three Figures Forging Through a Mountain in Autumn. So please welcome me, uh, join me in welcoming the Chairman, President, and Chief Executive Officer of 3M, Inga Tulin. Welcome. Good evening, Ambassador Xiong, Ambassador Sun Wan, Ambassador Li, Ambassador Hills, Mr. Orleans, and my fellow honorary, Ms. Indra Nui. It's a great pleasure to be here with all of you tonight and to recognize the great relationship between 3M and the country and people of China which I am delighted to discuss with you this evening. We have come a long way since we, 1984, established the first wholly owned foreign invested enterprise outside the Shenzhen Special Economic Zone in Shanghai. 3M China today spans 12 subsidiaries, 27 offices, and 11 manufacturing sites, and employs more than 8,200 people. Much of the critics go, critique go to two people that have driven our vision and execution. Ron Bockel, former executive vice president of International that had a tremendous vision many years ago, and Kenneth Yu, our president of 3M China today, that executed the plan in an incredible way. And I would like us at this point in time to give a big applause both to Ron and to Kenneth. Trem Shana has built a broad portfolio of businesses under Kenneth's leadership and reached today a sales turnover of $3 billion and continues to grow. But nothing gives me more pride than to talk about the people of 3M China. All across the country, 3M focus intensively on our people and we take care to create development programs for our people that fit 3M's global culture and support our global strategies. 3M has found a most welcoming home in China, and our people there have found a welcoming home in 3M. One need only look at these statistics. In 3M China, the average service time for our employees is more than 20 years. Think about that. The average year of service for employees in 3M China is 20 years. So we are very proud of that, because that means that people like to work with us, and they are doing a terrific job. But mainly tonight, I want to tell you about how the people of 3M China are embracing and drive 3M's vision. Earlier this year, when I was honored to be named the CEO of the company, I laid out a vision together with my leadership team in order to inspire employees and position 3M positively with our customers. So we set out to capture the essence of 3M with a clear vision that is both timely and timeless. Tonight is a pleasure to me to share it with you. 3M technology advancing every company, 3M products enhancing every home, and 3M innovation improving every life. I believe these simple statements capture very well the essence of 3M, technology, products, and innovation. They reflect what we do for our customers every day, advance, enhance, and improve. And they set the goal for all of us to touch every company, every home, and every life all around the world and in China. Today, our people in China are bringing that vision to life. And I would like to share a couple of examples for you. Here's one example how technology is advancing companies. In preparation for the 2010 World Expo, Shanghai Podang Ghost Company turned to 3M to help 
with the underground gas, gas pipeline in the World Expo Park. The 3M Dynatel electric market system with RFID system technology was installed and positioned and recognized underground equipment, such as pipelines and valves, that's reducing the impact of road excavation and surroundings, impacting no roads and, in fact, no residents was impacted around the expo. And it also enabled intelligence management of a very complex urban pipeline. This is just one example of 3M technology advancing every company, and there are many more. Let me turn to 3M products enhancing every home. The fact is, most people in China use 3M products in their daily lives, sometimes directly, sometimes indirectly. We know that the best way to understand 3M is to experience it. So our people created 3M Innovation Day in Beijing, a large-scale exhibition showcasing 3M technologies and 3M products. We wanted a way to convey our customers that not only 3M advanced technology and innovation is due for R&D in, in, in companies, but also that they can be used in the homes. And our dealership in China are using this as a platform in order to launch products in a successful way. We do it with products that are well-known, Post-it, Scotch, Thinsulate, Filtrate. All of them we are able to launch in China due to a combination of innovation days and a good channel as we move ahead. Finally, 3M innovation improving every life. For us, life is healthcare, schools, and sustainability. And they are all important values for us as a company and in 3M China. And I think it's an important thing when you think about the vision as we move ahead in terms of improving, enhancing, and advancing. Be able to do it with products, technologies, and innovation. And try to do it in every company, every home, and every life. So I'm here to tell you that our commitment to China in order to continue drive our vision will stay still. We will make sure that our products, our innovation, and our outcome of what we do will enhance the life domestically for the people of China. Thank you very much and good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Inge. Truly remarkable work that you guys are doing in China. Now I'd like to introduce our other honoree tonight, the chairman and CEO of PepsiCo, Indra Nui. If you're a food and beverage company and you're going to be successful in China with 1.3 billion consumers, you have to know how to appeal to a wide variety of tastes. And to do that, you also need to honor cultural tradition, traditions while also innovating at the very same time because consumers around the world have evolving tastes. So it's not an easy task, but it's something that Indra and PepsiCo have done incredibly well. And as a result, PepsiCo's products have truly become part of Chinese culture. If you don't believe me, you really have to see this. Go to the National Committee's website and watch PepsiCo's Bring Happiness Home film. The company created it for this year's Spring Festival. The video struck a chord with people all over the country. And listen to this statistic. Became the most watched online video in China. Pretty remarkable. The reason? It inspired many people to reunite with their families for the new year. I also hope you all had the opportunity to experience some of PepsiCo's Chinese products at the reception earlier tonight. Tell Indra how you like them later on when you see her. <laughs> but just as important as what Pepsi does in China, it's how they do it. Under her leadership, PepsiCo has grown in the country by doing business the right way, with the understanding that it can only succeed in China if China's people, communities, and economy also thrive right alongside Pepsi. She shows the kind of leadership and champions the kind of collaborative approach to business that we all need to succeed in China in the future. Mr. Zhao Wei also custom created the award that I'm about to present to Indra and PepsiCo on behalf of the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations. A replica of the scroll, scroll I'm expecting is going to be appearing on the screens above us. This one is entitled, Thousands of Flying Waterfalls from on High. 
Ladies and gentlemen, my great pleasure to introduce Mrs. Indra Nooyi. Thank you, Michelle, for that kind introduction. And Inga, I'd like to congratulate you and 3M on the well-deserved recognition of your tremendous work to strengthen ties between the United States and China. You know, I've had the great pleasure of visiting China frequently, three times this year alone, in fact, and I'm scheduled to get out there a couple more times this year. But one trip in particular stands out for me. Three years ago, I spent a few weeks, one shot, traveling around China, trying to get a better sense of the country and better sense beyond the big cities I'd visited previously. I spent afternoons in the homes of some of our Chinese consumers, sharing tea, snacks, ideas. I learned about traditional Chinese medicine and even had a personal traditional Chinese medicine consultation. I visited many towns, villages, and universities, had lunches and dinners, and long discussions with young people everywhere along the way. <clears throat> In these incredible conversations and experiences, I witnessed the tremendous promise of China and its people. And that trip illuminated for me the opportunity that PepsiCo saw when it was one of the first US-based companies to enter China more than 30 years ago. Today, we are privileged to be one of China's most successful food and beverage companies, directly and indirectly employing 30,000 local associates across our system in China. We are very proud to stand with the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations today in support of the friendship between the two countries. The value of this relationship is enduring. Strong economic ties between us are good for America and good for China and good for business. But most importantly, I came away from that amazing trip more convinced than ever that all global business leaders need to spend the time to understand China better. I continue to work towards a better understanding for myself, and along my journey, I've realized three important truths which I'd like to share with you. First, as a nation, the United States is in competition for China, not just with China. Economic partnership is not a zero-sum game. One success need not be at the expense of the other. Instead, we should see our relationship as a tremendous opportunity to ensure economic progress for both China and the United States while benefiting millions more around the world. Working as partners, we can achieve a more optimal global result. The US and China have long, long had extraordinarily complementary economies. Today, we have much to gain from each other, and that can best be achieved through collaboration. In many instances, and across a number of sectors, we see this happening every day. And for us to continue to succeed, we have to work together. We need each other to grow. So that was the first truth. We compete for China as much as we do against China. The second truth is that to compete for China, all of us must evolve the current model of how we operate in China, working towards solutions that are win-win for all sides. With the expertise that many global companies bring to the table, they can grow their businesses in China while helping to enrich China's economy in a way that also meets the needs of the Chinese people. At PepsiCo, we sincerely believe that what is good for our business can and should be good for China and the world as a whole. It's a commitment to sustainable growth that we call performance with purpose. Let's take the issue of global water scarcity. PepsiCo depends on natural resources for our operations, so reducing our environmental footprint is critical to our long-term sustainability. Protecting the Earth's most precious assets is also essential to the lives of billions of people that our business touches. That's why our production facilities use the latest technology to significantly improve water and energy efficiency and why, in China, in partnership with the All-China Women's Federation, we have built 1,500 water cellars in rural China, bringing clean drinking water to 50,000 people, with the goal to reach 500,000 people by 2015. And as one of the largest seed-to-shelf food enterprises in China, 
and one that locally sources our products, our business depends on sustainable agricultural practices. Over the past 12 years, we have invested in developing farms and capabilities, including eight sustainable demonstration farms that use the most advanced irrigation technology, including drip irrigation, advanced fertilization technologies, and advanced crop management techniques. And these efforts have improved crop yields and helped improve the lot of more than 10,000 Chinese farmers and their families, even converting desert grassland to, product, to productive farmland in Inner Mongolia. I had the privilege to visit Baotao, and the transformation is simply amazing. When Chinese communities succeed, our business succeeds and vice versa. And this is the heart of performance with purpose and why we view our support of these activities to be critically important. It's a win-win approach to business that has absolutely energized our associates in China. They're incredibly passionate about our business, but for them, China is not just another market, it's home. And so our commitment to a safe workplace, exceedingly high quality products, sustainable growth, and doing business the right way is a commitment to their future. To them, PepsiCo is not a foreign company looking into China from the outside, we are their company, a global player, yes, but one that is a part of the fabric of local society. So that was the second truth. The third, a critical part of evolving how we operate in China is for global companies like ours to become truly local, understanding and reflecting local, culturally-based tastes and preferences. It's the approach we take in China and in every market in which we operate around the world. Let me give you an example. A staple of the Chinese breakfast table is the congee rice porridge. But as the lives of Chinese consumers get busier, they no longer have the time to cook congee the traditional way. And while it's often it offers sustenance, adding whole grains to congee would improve the product's overall nutrition profile even more. So after studying local cuisine and local tastes, we created Quaker oats, quick congee. It has whole grain oats, <laughs> Chinese herbs, a time-saving, great-tasting version of this breakfast favorite that's made simply by adding hot water. Everybody loves us in China for this. And the congee varieties are specific to local taste preferences and incorporate elements of traditional Chinese medicine with, ingredient, with ingredients like wolfberry, white fungus, and red dates. Believe me, it's delicious. <laughs> the reason we can create such locally relevant options is that <clears throat> PepsiCo China is overwhelmingly staffed and run by Chinese. In fact, this fall, we are opening our largest research and developer center outside the United States in Shanghai. And we're going to develop products geared for Asian tastes, especially Chinese tastes, because the only tastes that matter are indeed the local tastes. Imagine the impact if we all do business in China, with China, and for China, promoting the spirit of collaboration and working towards mutually beneficial, sustainable solutions with a deep respect for local needs. That is how we all will win in the end. China and the United States are two great countries with incredible promise and potential that can be further unleashed in cooperation with one another. The promise of what we can achieve together, I believe, is unlimited. We have the great opportunity together to make the world a better place and shape our future success. I hope tonight we fully realize the positive force we can be, united and committed to collaboration. Xi Xi. I know we've all benefited from the warm words of our two very distinguished honorees. This has been a special evening, and our thanks go out to the diplomats, our honorees, our supporters, our president, and the wonderful staff of the National Committee. I hope you've had a, as good a time as I've had, 
and we look forward to seeing you next year. But have a great evening, and thank you so much for being with us.